What is up everybody and welcome to today's video. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Zach. This is SC Fishkeeping. I appreciate you stopping by. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below if you have not already. And as always, a very special thank you to all of my members tuning in. Now today we are doing something extremely exciting and I say that because I've done a video like this before and it has at this point almost half a million views. So you guys really like when I do the DIY things and today's DIY thing is turning this trash can into a filter for that 300 gallon pond. Making a filter, making a filter. So a little bit bigger than the last time that I did it and we're just gonna walk through super simple step by step so you at home know exactly how to replicate this build because it's a fantastic filter to move a lot of water and we have a pretty big fish in this pond. So let me show you first what you're gonna need. This is gonna be your big primary, like think of like you're building a canister filter. That's what you want. I will put a link down in the description for all the stuff that I'm using, but this is one of my favorite brand pumps. Super reliable, moves a lot of water. Inside that trash can, you're gonna want a laundry basket or something with holes in it, and that's gonna hold all your media. I'm using these sponges I found at Walmart. You can use the little pot scrubbies, you can use old sponge filters, whatever you want. I'm using a terracotta pot, some one inch PVC, some different connectors, which you'll see how all this stuff kind of comes together. Then this is super important, some sort of structure for a base. Again, I'll explain it all, but this is kind of the basis of the equipment, pretty easy, and then you're only gonna need a couple of tools. Ooh, yeah, Vanna White it for us. A drill with yeah. drill bits. Drill bits. And a hole saw. Absolutely. And then Vanna White this. What is this? This is Fine. a PVC cutter. How does it, it work? Cut, it cuts PVC. God. You put PVC in there. <laughs> put PVC in here and you squeeze this and it basically ratchets itself and cuts through PVC tubing. I can't really explain it any more <laughs> than that. It's a pair of scissors from PVC pipe. Nailed it. That's okay. it. That's all you need for the tools. Step two is pick the location for your filter and this is where those cinder blocks and like some structural support is really gonna come in handy. Obviously you want this filter to be somewhere kind of tucked into the corner. Uh, in this case, I have this nice corner here but I do have a sump in the floor. So you'll notice we put the cinder blocks over here like this and then you need a really, really solid, fully covered base. Something like, something like that. This is solid. It is level, it's gonna hold the entirety of the bottom of the trash can, and this is kind of my tip number one. Make this solid. Any sort of cracks or anything like this where the trash can, the plastic can get under, it will bow under the weight of the water. So, lock that up. Next, throw your trash can on it. Just like that. You can see, it's solid. It's not gonna wobble once there's water in there, and full coverage on that base. I like my overflows to be level with the edge of the pond. So what you can see we did is we marked two holes of where we're gonna drill, and that's actually gonna be the next step, is to drill using a hole saw. Line the pilot bit up with the mark, and just start slow. And roll it this way as nice not to throw <laughs> plastic in the fish pond. Like I said, you don't have to put an extreme amount of pressure behind it. Just like that. One done. One to go. Hole number one, hole number two, and you're actually gonna wanna put hole number three right up here, right in the middle of your lid. That's where the water is gonna go in, as you'll see. Now, tip number one was make sure that's all level. Tip number two, you're gonna wanna put 
the holes for your returns right at about pond level, maybe a little bit higher. And what this is gonna do is make sure that you're not putting too much pressure on the unit seal. You'll see that kind of here in a minute. Now, we got our holes in there. Next step, we're gonna put the pump in there, but we're not gonna put it just straight on the sand for a number of different reasons. Another snap. And this is where this cheap Walmart trash can comes in. Now, you'll notice what we did. We have the trash can in there. There's some just some rocks down there to kind of keep the pump up off the bottom of the trash can as well as keep the trash can weighed down. Now, this is tip number three. You can see we drilled a number of holes in the side of that. What this is gonna do is if anything were to ever happen to your filter where it was like flooding out or overflowing, the pond will drain down to those holes and then it'll drain out the trash can and keep the rest of the water in the pond. So this is gonna make sure that you will not flood out onto like the floor of your fish room. It'll not drain your pond and potentially kill your fish. This right here is like a $5 fish floor saver. So definitely recommend that. Now, next thing we're gonna do is throw some, uh, just something to kind of hold the pump up. That almost worked. It did. I was pretty impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, nailed it, first try. And then, without dipping the camera in the water, we're just gonna set our pump right on there. And that is exactly how your pump is gonna sit inside the pond, which means the next step is to uh, add our plumbing. So Joe is gonna display kind of how this pump works. It comes with a bunch of little plastic pieces. This is like a little ring, and then it has the kind of, uh, what do you call that, an adapter, the hose? A mail end adapter, yes. Perfect. Then you slide that on there, and then that is just gonna let you put the PVC. And water on the floor. <laughs> water on the floor, but you can see the PVC just slides on just like that, and then the pump goes down in there, and then we will cut to see where we want PVC to drain in the basket. There are a bunch of different ways that you could actually set this up as far as how you want your plumbing to come up. You could go up, over, down, run it behind the pond and hide it. But the easiest for me is to go straight up and into uh, the trash can. And so Joe's actually showing how he kind of gets the, the perfect cut. So call this tip number four. This is level right here with the top of the trash can. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna make a mark. Perfect. And that's where we're going to cut it. As far as the across, I've got the elbow on the end of the pipe here. Put that into the feet. That's, that's exactly how you're going to do that when it's actually filtering. So yep. having that elbow, that's exactly yep, that's the right where you're measurement. Put your feed, and then we're going to go here. And that's how we're going to get our length across. So now we've got our height and our width marked. Perfect. Cut it off and put it on. So we're going to go ahead and line the blade up with the mark here. And it's just basically it just ratchets itself. And you can see it, you know cutting straight through the PVC, giving it a nice, clean edge. Easy as that. Easy as that. Now we just gotta do it on that one? Yes. And then we'll put it together. And just like that, we got our cuts, everything is perfectly measured. This thing is just gonna kinda sit in here, and then once we add the rest into here, it'll kinda lock it all down. But, next we're gonna do the uniseals. These things are meant to go on a curved plastic surface like this, so it works out great. And they just uniseals in just like that. Then you're going to cut some uh, overflows out of that same size PVC, and you just kind of wedge it in there. But again, going back to that tip, it should sit right against the edge of this pond here. This is the part where you get to have some fun with it. This is where you decide how you want the water to go back into your pond and if you want any sort of current. This is what's gonna help oxygenate the water. We've got our overflows, kind of dry fit on here. We got our uh, intake put in. The next thing I'm gonna show you is what actually goes inside the trash can and that's where that terracotta pot comes in. So you're gonna take this terracotta pot and you're just gonna put it upside down. Super simple. And all that's gonna do is it's gonna hold our laundry basket up off the bottom of the trash can and it's gonna hold all of our media just like that. So when the water pours in from the top, uh, we actually have a little DIY spray bar, which I'll show you in a second, and that's gonna disperse the water over our media. It's gonna go down through that trash can, fill up through the bottom, and then spill out through our overflows, which are right there. Mm -hmm. Super simple. So next thing I gotta do is 
open up all these. That would have been really embarrassing if I couldn't do it. And then we just make it rain. Now just like 30 more times, so. And just like that, the laundry basket is full of the sponges. And this is what's gonna hold all that beneficial bacteria. And you can use these sponges, you can use the pot scrubbies. If you have like old filters that uh, you're not using anymore, tear them apart, you can throw all that stuff in there. The more, the better. And then all you gotta do is top it off with this stuff, which is called polyfill. This is just like quilt batting. You can buy it at Walmart. And uh, this is gonna help clean the water. So if you can picture water drains down, it's gonna go through this polyfill. This is gonna catch the majority of your gunk. And then it's gonna go through all those sponges. It's gonna hit the bottom of the trash can, fill back up, and then it's gonna spill out and over. And that is all we're gonna put in the bottom. You can have fun with this. You can put some lava rock down in the bottom if you wanted to. You could change the laundry basket into something bigger. This is what I do and this works great. Next thing we gotta do is, uh, well, I put the lid back on, but I wanna show you the spray bar. This is the uh, little DIY spray bar. As you can tell, it's just a couple pieces of the PVC that we cut with some holes just kind of drilled in to each of the sides. Put some end caps on there and a little T. Now picture, this is gonna sit right here above this polyfill. The water is gonna hit it, go out through those spray bars, spread around the trash can, filter down. Then like I said, fill up, spill out. I think we're just about ready to test it. So let's set it back up over in our corner. So I'm just gonna take the plug from the pump and plug it into our little controller here. We have it set to low, but we'll pump it up to about half speed and we just kind of watch. And if water comes out, then we know we've done something right. And just like that, that's what we're looking for is good flow coming out of these. There shouldn't be any drips coming out from underneath our uniseals. What do you think, Joe? I dig it, man. Happy with it? I am. And this is on half speed, so we can get a lot more flow in there. Should no, we... Uh, I really dig it. Should we seal it up? We're going to put it here, put it here, and put it here. Don't put it on the one that goes through the lid, because you'll never be able to take the filter apart. And if you want to clean it, obviously it helps to be able to take the lid off. So. We'll get it cemented. It's gonna take like 15, 20 minutes to cure and then we'll show it off in all its glory. And just like that, we have converted this pond from having just one really small canister filter that wasn't doing anything to a massive DIY trash can that is doing about 1,100 gallons per hour. So it's turning this pond over at least four times, if not a little bit more. So super awesome build, super easy build. Um, I'll add up the price of everything when I'm editing and put it right here. So as you can see, very cheap. That is significantly less than a dollar per gallon for this pond. So awesome, awesome build. Um, one thing I learned after doing the last one, I keep saying that, is you guys had a lot of questions after I did it. I didn't explain things well enough or you wanted me to elaborate on things. So any questions you have about this build, go down to the comments and let me know and I will try and get back to each and every one of you as best that I can because I truly think more people need to build this pond and this filter. I mean, this whole setup is, is awesome for fish. But uh, Joe, what do you think? I love it, man. Yeah? Yeah. Feel good about uh, how we got your catfish set up? I do, I feel very good about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Again, hopefully you learned something. Let me know if uh, you guys build stuff like this and send me pictures on Instagram and stuff like that. I love it when you share the projects that I build and do it yourself. So thank you guys for watching. Remember this is Zach with SC Fishkeeping reminding you that every fish is a keeper. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.